Today I've got with me the latest SkyZone SteadyView receiver hardware. This is it. This is the end all be all to all the problems that people have had with the SteadyView. Or is it? Well, let's find out. I did some before and after tests on my own with drones that I had in my collection that had problems with the mixer. All right, so I'm gonna shake you through the before and after of this brand new SteadyView hardware so you can see it for yourself. Let's begin with the Tiny Hawk Freestyle 2 because this one is bad, really, really bad. Right here, that's a desync. And every time you see the picture go like this throughout the video, the mixer is failing. It's failing to build the picture correctly, and I'm getting the, this darkened image. Now, some people with the steady view get their image to roll. Others get it to be dark like this, like you're seeing. Like, this is very, very unusable. I can't fly like this. Uh, so I would say this is probably one of the worst. We're starting with the worst, and then we'll uh, end with ones that are not so bad. Here's after the upgrade to the new hardware. No issues. Like, <laughs> look at it. There's no desyncing going on. You'll see the, the regular blips and whatnot, but you're, we're not getting those whacked out colors uh, that you were seeing before from total failure to create the right image. This is video transmitter uh, crap. And by the way, the Tiny Hawk Freestyle 2 video transmitter, not really impressed. Um, but again, we're looking for like hard desyncs like you were seeing before and I, I definitely major, major improvement. I'd say fixed Next up is the Reckon 3. And if you thought that the Tiny Hawk 2 was bad, wait till you see this. So here I'm waiting to get my lock. It locks. I get the beep on the receiver and I take off. I go for a flight. Now I want you to pay attention to the text. Look where it says Reckon 3, the timer, the battery stuff. Uh, it's not moving, right? It's not like shaking back and forth, right? You know, the drone image is going a little in and out here because the video transmitter on this thing is not the best, but you see that desync? You see what just happened? Look at the text. Look at how all the OSD text is shaking. The entire image now is shifting from the right to the left, including the OSD text, because after that particular desync, the whole image has been thrown off. This is horrible. This is completely horrible. And this is an example, again, of the kind of worst result you can get with the original SteadyView hardware. Real quick intermission here. Uh, if you could drop a like on this video, if you're enjoying these comparisons and this before and after review of the hardware, I would really, really appreciate that. It helps the channel out and it encourages me to make more content like this. Well, here's the new hardware. And I'm already a minute into the flight here and I, I just kind of clipped this because I'm flying underneath the metal structure. I'm kind of flying all over the place. And look, I'm not desyncing. The desyncing happened pretty much immediately uh, in the beginning, the first video. Uh, whereas here, I'm just sailing. No issue. I mean, yeah, there's a little bit of shimmering, I guess you can see that, but uh, it's not desyncing. The image itself is not desyncing like it was there. That was crazy. So yeah, major difference, night and day difference, like usable. All right, here's the Mobilite 7. I don't know whether I should include this because it's definitely more subtle. Um, for example, there was a desync, but this one doesn't desync nearly as frequently as the other models. In fact, I had to fly a couple packs to even get it to desync. So it's not, it's really not consistent. Um, but it's there, it exists, and as you can see, I'm going through here, and there's a little blip, there's a little definite little desync. Hopefully, you can kind of start to notice these uh, when it's desyncing, but it's subtle. On this model, it's, it's a bit more subtle. Like, that's probably the worst you're gonna get right there. All right, and here is the after result. And... I'm not even getting little blips. Again, on the Mobilite 7, it was very subtle. You'd have a slight darkened image for maybe a split second or two. The desyncs were happening, but it was getting it back relatively quick, relatively quickly. So, yeah.
kind of moseying my way through here. And this darkness is just the sun blowing at the camera. This camera is terrible with low light. And now I bring you the last comparison, the Beta 85 Pro 2. It's a modified one. Um, so here we go. Already desyncing out of the gate with this one. Uh, this is the older model of 85 Pro 2. Can't remember exactly what camera is on here. I may have changed it at some point. Really, listen, with the steady view, it comes down, a lot of it comes down to the camera. It's not really the VTX, um, not necessarily the VTX, it's the camera. You know, if you change out the camera, it's like it never happened or it doesn't exist. Some of them, you will never see it. Some cameras, you will just never see it. Uh, this is terrible. This is this is pretty bad. This is all just about as bad, probably, as the Tiny Hawk. Um, all right, and here is the after. Getting some typical little blips. Yeah, just kind of going through things. Pretty good. I'd say this is pretty, pretty good from what we came, just came from there. I mean, wow, night and day difference, right? This is uh, running the TBS Unified Nano video transmitter. I put that in there. Um, I put that in there when I did some work on this one. And it's also running uh, a non-dipole antenna. So, yeah, I'm just going all around. Guys, you can see that this thing is not desyncing. Maybe there's a little shimmer on those trees there. But, yeah, it's not desyncing. Not like it was. It's very distinct. So we've reached the end of the comparisons. Let's talk conclusion here. Should you go out and buy this new SteadyView receiver fusion board, upgrading your hardware, and maybe solving the problem for you once and for all? Look, my results, I think, speak for themselves. I very clearly had drones in my collections with camera setups that were just plain screwed up, didn't work well in mixed mode at all. Likewise, though, I have a lot of other drones that I didn't show you here that work just fine. They work perfectly fine. And I've been using these goggles for quite some time with some of them, and I, I really couldn't complain that much. Every now and then, I would come across a model that was really, really bad with mixed mode, and I would just drop back to diversity. It, it stunk. It sucked. But it's nice, it's nice that there's a fix. There's a cheap, quick, easy upgrade that you can do to fix it. Should they be giving it out for free? I do think so. I really think they should be giving it out for free or a little cheaper, but it is what it is. Better late than never. Uh, I do want to talk about how to do the upgrade. I see a lot of people in the groups doing this wrong. You need to upgrade your goggle firmware first, and then don't touch the firmware on the SteadyView receiver. It is already upgraded for you from the factory. Just plug it in. You're going to need to use an X-Acto knife to remove some of the glue that's on uh, the current receiver to be able to pull the fusion board that's on there off. Uh, just go slowly and carefully around the thing, but don't touch that soft, don't touch that firmware. It should be just fine for you from the factory. Leave it alone. All right, so that concludes our look at the new SteadyView Fusion Board from SkyZone. I do want to mention, I bought this with my own money. I bought my SkyZones with my own money. This is my true, unfiltered opinion on this stuff. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know your situation with the SteadyView receiver. Are you thinking about getting the Fusion Board? What do you think after seeing my results? Do you feel more confident jumping into it? Please let me know. If you decide to buy the upgrade and have some time to make a video to upload your results similar to the way I did, I think it would be an excellent resource for the community. There are a lot of us SkyZone owners out there, and a lot of people are wondering, is this module worth upgrading for? Right now, I can't tell you for sure that if you get this module, your exact camera setup will work, but this is my experience, and I hope it was useful to you.